Welcome back, fellow folklorists, to what is almost definitely my last video on the Fountainhead Palace. By now we've covered almost everything, but there are still a few questions left unanswered. These are all fairly unrelated though, so they'll have to go into a category I like to call miscellaneous. Nevertheless, I'll do my best to answer them for you, so let's jump right in, shall we? Let's start with the one that's the most minor, the white lizards. If your game experience was anything like mine, the first time you encountered these, you prepared yourself for some kind of strange status effect. Do they cause some form of toxic status? Maybe some kind of ice? Or worse, what if they cause some kind of terror? You prepare yourself for the worst as you get hit for the first time and find... nothing, actually. Wait, did that even do damage? Oh, I guess it did a little bit. You then probably shrugged and moved on like I did. I thought maybe the lizards had been purified by the fountainhead waters or something. It wasn't until later that I realized what was really going on. If you use the bestowal ninjutsu on them, you can find out their real status effect, life steal. Yes, it bestows your blade with the ability to steal health from enemies. I'm not sure why the effect isn't applied by the lizard's poison, perhaps life steal doesn't translate well to range attacks, but either way, this effect actually hints at the real insidiousness of the divine dragon's powers. The divine dragon itself doesn't actually grant endless vitality or at least not out of nothing. Rather, it's a gigantic parasite that steals life. This is the real secret behind the old dragons of the tree and the divine air. The old dragons when we first see them are old and seem to be affected with something similar to dragon rot because the divine dragon is actually draining their life slowly. This is why when the divine dragon appears, the old dragons all sacrifice themselves to grant it the vitality it needed to manifest itself. The same goes for the divine air. Those chosen by the Divine Heir don't truly become immortal. Rather, they steal the vitality of others to replace what they lost, and they too are connected to the Divine Dragon. It's why with enough time, even a Divine Heir will contract Dragon Rot, because the Divine Dragon uses the Dragon's heritage as a way to gather even more vitality. In that same way, the White Lizards may use lifesteal to provide vitality for themselves, or perhaps their lifesteal isn't effective because they aren't true dragons. It's hard to say for sure, but it at least shows that the lifesteal effect is on theme for the Fountainhead. The next mystery we have to tackle is that of the giant straw figure that transports us to the Fountainhead in the first place. Unfortunately, it's hard to say exactly who built it and when, but it has likely served as the transportation to the Fountainhead Palace ever since its initial separation from Mibu Village. This is because the straw man serves as a literal barrier between the divine and the mundane. For that purpose, the straw man is actually considered a giant waraningyo. Waraningyo were a kind of doll made from straw that would commonly be used as wards against evil. They have also become famous for their use in curses as well, but judging by the talismans placed at the center of the straw man, I would say this one is definitely intended to serve as a ward against evil. It even goes one step further since the straw man seems to be made of gigantic shimanawa. Shimanawa are a special kind of rope made of rice straw that usually adorns sacred spaces in Japan and function as a ward against evil as well. You can even see many examples of this in-game, such as the giant one above the serpent shrine. So by having a war ningyo made of Shimanawa guard the entrance to the Fountainhead Palace, they are making very clear just how sacred a space the Fountainhead is considered to be. The straw figure is literally acting as a giant ward by physically barring entry into the Fountainhead. This leaves us with one final mystery of the Fountainhead Palace, the identity of the Shrine Maiden at the top of the shrine. The game offers us very few details about this maiden, and her human appearance stands out in an area filled with inhuman warriors. There are quite a few theories about her identity, and I will go through them one at a time in order of likelihood. The first is that she may actually be Kingfisher, the sculptor's missing partner who we never meet in game. The reason for the argument is that it seems like she may be missing a finger if you look closely at her character model. However, this seems to be more of a graphical glitch, and given that there's no other details that may link them, it seems unlikely. The second candidate is definitely the more popular fan theory, since it suggests that the maiden's identity is actually Tomoe. Some claim that it's her given her close connection to the previous divine heir, and that she made her way there to perhaps help Takeru. In addition, they claim further proof is the necklace she is wearing that uses a Kama-like symbol also known as Tomoe. Except, this is actually what is known as a magatama, a kama-shaped bead or stone that has been of religious importance to Japan for some time. The tomoe is considered to be based off of magatama, but they aren't the same thing. Also, given that necklaces decorated with magatama are quite common in Japanese religious ceremonies, it's not uncommon to see a shrine maiden wearing one. There's also debate about whether tomoe actually managed to return to the divine realm or not, 
but given the way the other characters talk about Tomoe and the grave for her and Takeru, I feel fairly confident in saying that they actually buried her body next to Takeru's. So who does that leave us with? Well, the answer is probably that she isn't anyone, or at least not that we already know of in-game. But at the risk of complicating things, I'll put forth my own theory. You may remember when I was discussing the Divine Dragon's relation to Kura Okami, the Dark Dragon God of Water, that I mentioned a goddess along with him, Kura Mitsuha. There isn't much I can say definitively about Kura Mitsuha, other than her name can be read as Dark Water Goddess, and that she is commonly paired with Kura Okami as they are both water gods. Usually, she's depicted as Kura Okami's bride, or as a medium who performs rites in his name. Her appearance can also suggest this kind of heavenly origin as well, with her appearance somewhat resembling that of a tenon, characters from Japanese Buddhism that are akin to angels who are sometimes said to rest alone at the top of high peaks. I can't say for sure whether this means she is really meant to be a form of celestial being, or just a woman who was chosen to represent Kuramitsuha, but ultimately the Shrine Maiden's identity will have to remain a bit of a mystery. Well, that should just about do it for the story of the Fountainhead Palace. It took a while, but I believe I have now covered everything I can. But don't take my word for it, if you have a question about the Fountainhead that you still want answered, be sure to ask in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer it for you. There's still a lot of Sekiro left to discuss though, and I intend to cover everything that I can, so I hope you all like and subscribe and ring the bell to receive updates whenever I release a new video, and I'll see you next time. Until then, my fellow folklorists.